Hey, peeps. Party peeps. Tony Rowe in the house. Happy April Fool's Day. I did not prepare any type of prank. Though you guys are all fools for being silly enough to watch a game in the French Rubenstein. <laughs> Only I think that's funny. That's fine. Hope everyone's having a good weekend so far. I did wedding planning stuff. So I'm happy to get away and bore the hell out of Radimus here. Let's check out this guy's rating. No hyperbullet? For shame. Okay, I don't have hyperbullet either. I'm just kidding. Bishop d3 is the most, uh, by far the most played move here. And then c5, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, castles, castles. Okay, bishop g5. Somewhat unusual. I'm not sure it's bad. I'm going to go h6. Takes would be extremely lame, just giving up the bishop pair for nothing. Bishop h4 is the most thematic move and would transpose actually to... Uh, did he just take? No, okay. Okay, so he goes bishop e3. This is actually supposed to be kind of a good line or at least a tricky line for uh, white. White can go, uh, well, you can reach these positions from a lot of different ways, but the most common way is bishop g5, h6, knight takes f6 check, knight takes f6 check, and then bishop to e3. And white can actually instead go takes, takes, bishop e3. So in this position, white can go bishop e3 right away, which stops c5, which is the key idea for black. But um, white reasons that it's better to uh, trick me into weakening my king side with with h6 first. Interesting plan. Normally I think the bishop goes on d3 though. I could be wrong. All castle. Queen d2 and castles long with, with possible bishop h6 shenanigans is um, supposed to be the way. Sort of the most natural way to play here. I'm not sure how much of the theory White actually knows here, if he's just making it up. Actually, I think in this position, maybe even Queen D2 immediately is the move. I'm not totally sure. It's been a while since I've studied this particular line in the Rubenstein. It doesn't come up that much, honestly. Uh, okay, so... I think one idea is to go knight d5. That way, if he takes, takes, queen takes, I can go queen to f6. And give the, the queen the boot before knight takes g5, or knight g5, rather, gets me. Gets me. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. Knight d5. <laughs> mm, what would Georg do? I know bishop d6 is the move. I'm not sure I've ever seen bishop c4, so okay. Let's just... Queen d2. It's really between knight d5 and b6. b6 is, obviously, I'm going to put the bishop on b7, and I'm getting ready to to play c5 somehow. I could think about if I really want to be a jerk, I could go knight g4, stopping bishop takes h6, and threatening to grab the bishop pair. He would go bishop f4, I presume. If b6... Okay, so what's happening after b6 and takes, takes, all this stuff? So b6, takes, takes, takes. There's sort of the, the slow thread of knight to g5, which would freeze my knight on f6, and then bishop d3, bishop h7 check. I think that would be the main idea. So I could go... I could go b6, bishop takes h6, 
g takes h6, queen takes h6, knight to h7. That would stop knight g5 and also get ready to go queen to f6. Hmm. That seems good enough that I, I as of, of a defense that I think I would rather just go b6 here. Knight d5 is a, a thematic idea. Looking to lop this thing off and being able to meet all this with queen f6 right away, but I don't think I have to do that necessarily immediately. I can also gain a free move, actually, with um, bishop takes h6 and then knight e4. Hit the queen first and something like queen e3, then I can take, takes here, and then I can go queen f6 right away. So I would sort of expect white to have to delay that. I would maybe maybe he's going to go g4 or maybe he'll go castles long. I will need a concrete plan here at some point though. I need to I think I need to just go c5 in in some way or another. It might have been worth considering going c5 on the the move previous perhaps. I love this handle by the way. I don't know who this guy is, but you're a genius. <laughs> So silly. So I wonder if I should have maybe considered c5 here, for instance. My idea being that d takes c5, d takes c5. Eh, yeah, maybe that's not good. Castles, that'd be that would be maybe slightly annoying. Okay, so he castles. Knight d5 again is a consideration. Something like queen e7. Getting my queen off the d file and, and adding another protector to the c5 square. Maybe I could go rook f to d8 in that case as well. C5 right away I'm a little bit less excited about. If he takes it here because of the double attack on D6, I'd be forced to play bishop takes D6, and he could just take, lop a bunch of stuff off, I think. And I'm probably okay there. Like, my light squared bishop is really good, but I don't see why I should necessarily take all these weaknesses on. Well, all these weaknesses, that's, that's being harsh. Take on the C5 weakness if I don't have to. I feel like I'm pretty much okay in all of those positions just because my light squared bishop is so good. My king can easily sort of walk towards the center, but maybe I don't have to do that yet. Anyone wondering about this move, that, that's 100% out of the question. <laughs> yeah, you can wreck his pawn structure, but I'm also opening up the, the G file, and this bishop is, at the moment, I think a much better piece than this knight. Uh... I'll just go queen e7. Knight e5 is maybe maybe a better move, but um, we can take a look after afterwards. There's some validity in in keeping keeping the tension and keeping keeping things more complex against people who are lower rated than you. Oh, did I say he could go g4 earlier? Yeah. Maybe after bishop g7, I said he could go g4. He cannot go g4. <laughs> so before someone types into the comments, oh, you idiot, g4 hangs a knight. Dumbass. That's true. It does. Okay, so c5 right away is is pretty enticing now. I don't see any reason why I couldn't play that. I could also... Maybe slow roll it for one one more move and go rook f to d8. It doesn't look like there's any shenanigans. I doubt there would be. I guess, I mean, uh, uh, again, the, the same candidate is possible with knight d5. But I'm, I think I'm just going to play rook, rook f to d8. Again, just give him, give him a little bit more to think about here. This is a threat. Exploiting the pin, and now c5 maybe gains slightly in strength. I'm guessing with this move, white wants to play something like rook h to g1 and then g4, g5. It's a little slow, but um, I don't necessarily see another plan for white. This, this thing is not really a threat. 
I think, in almost any way now because I always have this move first, which is pretty annoying. Okay, so he goes queen e2. Is there any reason why I'd want to smack this thing? I don't think so. Is there any reason why I'd want to smack this thing? I definitely do not think so. The only real question here, I guess, is if I want to continue to try and entertain the idea of this or just go c5 immediately. I think c5 now is is quite good just because he, he can't even take here because e5 is hanging. Knight g4. Hmm. Probably not even going to contemplate this move. I feel like that's exactly what white wants. Honestly, any capture is probably good here. Knight d5 is sort of calling my name or just leaving it. C takes d4. I don't think it's the time for that yet because bishop takes d4 is a little bit annoying in this case. I could just leave everything and go rook a to c8. That way maybe this is lurking in some positions. If I go knight d5 and he goes bishop d2, I would assume it's just safe to, to grab here. Even if it's not, I think I have a lot of other enticing moves like uh, either bishop f4 or knight f4. Probably knight f4 is just really good in that case. If he takes here, I think I'm pretty happy to just take back. I doubt. I think white is just worse in that case. Two bishops for really nothing. I don't think after knight d5 this works. I would just take it. Takes check and then... I don't know, king somewhere, and I'm fine. The other capture takes check here first. Takes, takes, I don't believe in any of this. Okay, I'm going to go knight d5. Finally, the day has come. Shout out to the know-it-all. A loyal follower of the channel. Same with Dr. King Schultz. Um, Don't know it all. Also has a really great uh, site that he's posting Lee Chess themes on. Um, he he does a lot of stuff for with the stylish plugin. And I don't have the link on me. I know it's in the the Lee Chess forums. You could search for it, or you could just search Google for it. I'm sure you could find it. But I also think um, now that I've said this, he'll posted in the comments to this video. So if you're interested in picking up some custom U um, YouTube themes, idiot, uh, Lee Chess themes, he's posted some good ones already, and he'll post more, I'm sure, as the days go on, as he finds the time. So what will Rodimus do? See, who says the Rubenstein is boring? Look at this. This is a very, very rich position. Only one minor piece, one pair of minor pieces and one pawn has been exchanged. Opposite sides castling. Tons of tension. Okay, so... Why am I not taking on d4? Pretty sure I'm doing this, but let me make sure I'm not. Missing something obvious? I don't think so. I'm lopping that thing off. That's too juicy. And again, th this f4 square is calling my name in, in, in some way. And now the C file is open. This is starting to look uh, not super exciting for the white pieces. He 
Yeah, it, it sort of feels to me like this is just not the right square. It should be on d3, in my opinion. On d3, it's it's guarding c2. It's more active in the fight for the king side attack. It's not exposed along the c file. So I think this is this is pretty likely an opening inaccuracy of some kind. I'm not a huge fan of bishop d2 either, since it hangs this pawn. If you're going to play that way, at least chop on c5 first, I think, but... I don't know if it's if it's actually good or not for me to follow up with e5 on the next move. It's sort of a, a weakening move, but having these two guys in the center for nothing is... Okay, well, I don't have much of a choice here. I'm taking this way. This is a position when, in, in which a2 is, is likely hanging. You have to always worry about when you take these rook pawns with bishops that b3 is not trapping your bishop. But um, <laughs> bishop a2, b3, bishop a3 is mate. So I would at the very least have, have a free move to, to save the bishop. I mean, this is also the kind of position where even if bishop a3 wasn't made, it would be extremely risky for black to hang, or for white to hang the a pawn and then move the b pawn, like... Even as a sack, a5, a4 would be really dangerous. Ooh, going for it. I don't believe it at all. Not at all. All right, I gotta take it. I'm honor honor bound to take it. Here or here are my main candidates. I mean, honestly, probably all these moves win, but. So if king h7, queen h5 worried me, worried me for a second, but I think bishop f4 check, king b1, bishop takes h6 has got to be 100% winning. And so king h7, queen d2 is possible, then queen f6, knight g4, queen f4 would trade, trade queens. What else? King h7, knight g4 immediately. I don't know. Even in that case, I, I might be able to go f5. Is it better to just go king g7, though? So king g7 with the same lines. King g7, queen h5. Again, pretty sure it's just hanging this thing. Yeah. Seven, queen d2, king h6, knight g4, king f4, queen f4, excuse me. There's also bishop f4 in that position if I really want to chop some stuff off. King g7, knight g4. F5. He has 95, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it much, much matters.
Hmm. Oh, God, I only have four minutes. I'm kind of dozing off here. Uh, I'm going to go king h7. I don't know why. It, this is an arbitrary choice between this move and this move. The, the king g7 has the benefit that when the knight's on g4, there's no knight f6 check in here. King h7 has the small benefit that at some point if I want to take on g2 at the end of all these complications, rook g1 doesn't pin the bishop to my king. Those are the kinds of things I was thinking about, but I don't think it, it it's particularly relevant either way. We shall see. Please play queen h5. Just end the game. <laughs> I, I I have the threat of going of going queen g5 check immediately. And queen g5 check, the only way to save the knight is queen d2, but that loses a queen actually to bishop f4, so... Only really has this move, this move, or this move is candidates. Knight f5 doesn't work. I can just take it. <clears throat> okay, so knight g4. So if f5, knight e5, queen g5 check, king b1, hmm. Could just go e5 here. I could also go bishop f4 check, king b1, e5, which looks pretty pretty dirty. Can't really go g3 because it hangs a rook. I'm going to do that. I could also think about going f5, king b1, f5, and if knight e5, then maybe queen g7 or queen f6. Mm, I'm just going to do this, though. Oh, he has rook d4. Sweet baby Jesus. That's uh, that's a bummer. Oh, he doesn't have rook d4. I'm so lucky, rook d4, bishop a2. So weet. Tactics, guys. Tactics. Solve your tactics. Don't be like Tony. Be like a real chess player. Mm, that was embarrassing. If you guys have any constructive criticisms, you know, about my channel, put them in the put them in the comments. Everyone's super nice in the comments. I'm not that good. <laughs> if if you have something to say that's not positive, I can take it. I can take the heat. I do. You know, I'm pretty casual about my channel nowadays. I I don't have as much time to do as, as much instructional content as I want, so I normally just record games I'd be playing anyway. But um, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. One thing I would like is um. Lee Chess has the option to do custom themes. I would like a, like a custom Tony Rowe theme of some kind. Like instead of just having a, a black background, have it be 
you know, maybe say my name somewhere or have like some like like a slightly different color. People hate the light theme, so it still have to be dark. I don't know. I've been thinking about it. I really want to make a custom set of pieces for myself, but um, I am not nearly as skilled in Inkscape as I thought I would be. <laughs> so that's uh, that's pretty much that. That'll happen at some point, maybe. Keep thinking, Rodimus. Okay, Rook G1. So he wants to go G3. A fair, fair desire. Mm -hmm. I can just go F6, G3, Knight eight, or Bishop H6. Everything is... Protected in that case. I think I'm going to do that. I could also go g3, bishop g5, and give him h4 for free. Does that help me or hurt me? Probably hurts me. Most likely shouldn't do that. Really pains me to give up the two bishops here, even though, I mean, exchanging off his last minor piece is clearly very favorable for me. I'm a man of very rigid principles, and I like the two bishops. At some point, I just need to put this rook on c8. I probably should have done that, like, before engaging in all these concrete complications and such, but, uh, you know, I am who I am. So he, he wants rook d4 now is the idea, so I probably shouldn't let him do that. I want to play queen b7, threaten queen or bishop f3, but of course that's not particularly good. Queen f7 maybe. Could also go something like bishop e6, that would be very solid. Kind of like my bishop on this square, though, I don't feel the need to go crazy here. I'm just going to play queen, queen e7. I've been thinking too much already. Queen f7. It's hard to talk and get notation right at the same time. Coming some slack. So I, I really just have to play solid here and not do anything dumb. And I think for the most part I should be should be winning. If queen g6, there's knight takes f6 check, so I don't want to do that. And again, something like rook a to c8, rook c6, rook f to c8. Those would be my next moves if I was given a chance. Bishop a2 is maybe possible. Bishop a2, b3, a5, king takes, a4. Worth thinking about. He'd go king b2, probably takes. Yeah, it's not that clear. Probably not, not necessary. Yeah, this is getting a little messier than I wanted it to, isn't it? Right, right in the nick of no time as well. Uh, 
I mean, how, how bad can this really be for me? Not that bad, I don't think. Oh, my king is... This is bad. That's real bad. Didn't see that move at all. That's not good. Holy shitters. Wow, was my move bad. Okay. Literally the worst move you could play. No question about it. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so bad. Knight e5 is a massive threat, isn't it? Holy crap. I don't have any move here. Queen d4 is just wrecking me. Is that is that the case? Sure looks like it. Queen d4 threatening here, threatening here would just be completely, completely winning. <laughs> Dude, this position is comically bad. I think I would have to... Dude, I don't even know what I play there. It's it's all falling. It's all going to hell in a handbasket here. Oh, I can't go there. All right, I gotta go there. This <laughs> is sweet position. To have five seconds into. I think that that would. I think ninety five is probably unless there's a concrete follow up, not the move I'd want to play. Oh, he's got a lot of checks though, doesn't he? Ooh. That's not the one, I don't think. <laughs> That's not the check you want. This is not uh, the check you're looking for. Mm, Star Wars joke. Well, I feel slightly better about my position now. Yeah. Maybe just taking on e5 there was better, but didn't want to allow rook takes g8 check. Probably should have, actually. Just takes, rook takes g8 check here is pretty much death. He has to go back to g1 because queen d1 made is a threat. So that, that would have been probably a little bit easier. But, I mean, as, as it stands, he has to play. Okay, he's got a check. I'll go there. I th if he goes knight d7, I think I'm just going to take take and maybe take on f4. He'd be out of checks. I think pretty much out of threats and being up two bishops is is more than enough there. Crap. Is this a perpetual? Wow, this is so sick. I'm going for it. Oh my god. Uh, oh, I, I didn't lose my queen. <laughs> This is a this is by far the worst played game ever. Okay. Let's let's hop in. Let's do this. I'm attacking his queen. I hope he doesn't see it. <laughs> oh man. Uh I'm not gonna be proud to post this game at all. <laughs> uh This is the exact moment where this isn't part of my April Fool's prank either. This game is not a setup. I'm not creative enough or, or energized enough. I'm far too lazy for an April Fool's prank. God, I'm the worst. <laughs> this is so dumb. Let's go here. Bishop d5 was maybe. I, I mean, I, I can just let him take on d8 if I really want to take back and simplify the position. I just need to not get, not get checkmated somehow. Is really, 
really it. Ooh, I don't have any time. I'm just trying to plug up all the squares here and not do anything super dumb. It's not that easy, actually, to not do anything super dumb. Might be five check. I'll probably. Oh, God, I don't know. Okay, I'm definitely happy about that check. I don't think that was the most dangerous move there for me. Now it sort of feels like I'm consolidating. He's got this check. He can have the exchange. I don't care. Take it. I want you to take it. That night when I have no time left is just pretty annoying. <clears throat> I'm sure there are a lot of moves. I'm just going to play this one. That hangs a bishop. He can take here, check, and then go queen c1. Didn't see it. <laughs> this is a comedy of errors. Not my finest game. Actually, yeah, he can take on e8 first. Oh, this is getting kind of horrible, isn't it? <laughs> this is uh, honestly pretty hilarious. Check here. You can almost take the, yeah, you can take the bishop too. This is gross. Oh man. This is not even, not even clear that it's a win anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, so sick. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't take it. Which feels great. Now I'm now I'm winning. I mean I'm of two bishops, I think, but he yes. What a shit game. Oh my god. I am so sorry, guys. I I feel the need to <laughs> I don't even want to read what these are. I'm sorry if you if you guys watch this in person. Just the honestly the worst goddamn game ever. <laughs> Excuse my language as well. So bad. All right. Shout out to Tebow for this new awesome feature. No longer have to uh, copy the copy the link up here where you can't see and go into my profile, open my study thing, go to the study, add it to the study. We're just here already. Look how much time I saved. Use it. And thank Tebow. Donate to Lee Chess because he's the best. And this is the best website on the internet. Okay. <clears throat> and end rant. And that's not an April Fool's joke. Donate. PayPal's still working. Um, yeah, normal Ruben sign. This is actually the most popular move. If I pop open the opening explorer, you should be able to. Can you guys still see that? No, it's too big now. Okay. Um. Knight takes f6 is the most popular move. The position specific to this game can also be met from 6 bishop g5. Then h6 is supposedly the best move. Takes, takes, and then bishop e3. And uh, I think it's more popular to go bishop h4, but that allows black to go c5 immediately. Um, so it is an interesting line, an interesting try for white to... It's sort of the most principled that black basically always wants to, to exchange the d-pawn for the e-pawn and then the c-pawn for the d-pawn and the Rubenstein and just get this extra e-pawn with a, a solid position with no weaknesses and and try and go from there. I think um, you're supposed to go bishop d6. And yeah, I think bishop d3 is, well, we can just go straight to the... This is a an uncommon move order regardless, though. Most people go bishop d3 here, and then after c5, takes, takes, castles, castles, uh, bishop g5, and after b6, queen to e2, bishop b7, rook a to d1. This is a threat. It turns out that black's best move is queen to c7. And, whoops, and you can just not, uh, 
you don't have to care about this wrecked pawn structure. But that is neither here nor there. Um, and yeah, like I said earlier, it's also possible for white to just go bishop e3 here. But it, and again, I would have played bishop d6. Same, same basic idea, castles, b6, bishop b7, queen e7, c5, all that. The mo yeah, the most well-known game in this variation is um, Anand versus Georg Meyer. I think this was probably in Dortmund. <clears throat> but uh, here, I think probably it makes more sense to either just go queen d2 or bishop d3. Uh, um, whoops. D3 is just a better square, I think, for the bishop. And But even even further, I think white is pretty sure that the queen is going to go on to the D2 square. So you, I, I don't know, there, there are certain benefits to just going queen D2 immediately instead of declaring the position of your light squared bishop, but to each their own. So white, white went bishop C4. It just wasn't very active on this square the whole game. I mean, if you, if you think about, if you think about this piece, what it did later in the game, there's just, there really isn't that much there. Whereas on bishop, where on, whereas on d3, it would stop these bishop takes h6, uh, knight to e4 resources that I have, allowing queen f6 quicker. And it's just also uh, a more useful um, attack on the king side in general. It also stops knight h7 in a lot of those positions, right? So probably this is likely a dubious square for the bishop. Castles, queen d2, b6. Yeah, like I said, I don't think this is a threat right away. It, it, here specifically, I think I could probably go knight h7, bishop d3, and then f5. And he gets this check in, but I can go king h8, and he doesn't have anything. And I'm ready for queen to f6, like here, here, and queen to f6 is coming. So, um, no doubt black is probably winning here. This doesn't quite work. So h3, I think he just wanted to stop knight g4. But I also think it's likely that maybe this move is just a, a better try. I don't know if knight g4 is really all that great for black after bishop f4 anyway. So maybe castles is just uh, a little bit more to the point. h3, bishop b7. Um, I do wonder a little bit about this. Just because if c5 is good, then... You know, it's probably... I didn't think that this position was all that great for either person, really. Like, I, you know, black will put the king on on d7, and at some point uh, black will play rook d6 or um, rook d7, rook a to d8, or just take here, and then when the king's on e7, go rook a to d1, rook a to d8, rather. And You know, in these positions, it might actually be an idea, too to take on f3 because now there's no attack and and at least knight versus bishop imbalance so you know these weak pawn structure on, on the king side you could at least try and try and play play on as black yeah c5 immediately is probably also pretty good maybe a little bit more accurate even I don't necessarily, I know I'm going to play c5, but I don't necessarily, I'm not totally sure where this guy and this guy need to go yet. Worth considering. And, of course, takes uh, is not possible because of takes on e5. Interesting. What does Stockfish think I should play here? Knight d5. I think this is basically out of the question, but I also think that maybe something. Yeah, I don't think this or this are very good. What else was I? What else was I thinking about here, though? Ah, maybe like rooks to c8. I, I was thinking about, or just leaving it. D takes c5. Really, b takes c5, huh? I think not in a million years would I play b takes c5 after having put a rook on the c file. It doesn't make much sense. Probably would play something like this. It does look pretty much dead equal, though. He can grab a tempo here, and then after this, he can even just take, take. And... Okay, this is not equal for some reason. Uh, 
Oh, F3. A queen F4 check is a threat also. That's dirty. Okay, so that's probably not... Not very good, but this is equal. Hmm. Tough. Very tricky. Let's promote that. Yeah, but probably knight d5 is best, and I think it's the most natural also. And then c takes d4. Bishop d2 just seems like a mistake. I mean, hanging d4 for no reason is pretty gross. And then taking here also just seems kind of... Like, why give up the two bishops for nothing? And then a piece. I mean, all of these moves, I think, are just not, not very good. Is there any reason why I wouldn't want to play this move? Yeah, I looked at this, almost exactly this. I think maybe I thought queen f6, though. Or I wonder about check and queen f4, actually. That might be... Ah, knight d3, yeah. Reason I wanted to go check and queen queen f4 is to not allow white to support the knight with f4. Hoping to eventually take over the e5 square, but he does have knight d3, and then I have to move the queen back, and then he can be a little bit stubborn and play uh, play knight back to e5. But king g7, I think, is similarly winning. Another classic case of me thinking about two moves that are obviously both of relatively equivalent value for way too long and then getting into time trouble later. It's a habit like I really, really, really need to break. Okay, all of these moves I think are relatively... Odd. It does feel like I need to find a better move here, though. Yeah, yeah. I see... Sometimes it's just it's just lazy calculation on my part, honestly. Like, um, there were various po points during this game where I really wanted to go e4, and I just didn't do it because of rook takes d4, and I didn't see bishop a2 early enough. In, in the game, like, e4 here is just crushing. Then I can go f5, like, retreat the bishop or something, and everything is protected. I just have a massive center, and I'm up two bishops versus a knight and two pawns or something. I mean, it's just completely dead loss, and I play this crappy f6 move. I mean, it makes sense, of course. It's just not not nearly as good as... Yeah, and then I, I allow f4... And all of a sudden, stuff starts getting pretty gross. And then I take here, which is the most horrific move I've I played on my channel since I hung that rook. The only thing I looked at was um, queen d4. And then I was like, I, I calculated f3 and just thought I was completely winning here. Did not at all calculate g takes f4. And there's just simply not a good move here. Like, this is, like, queen d4 is completely fatal. I, I honestly did not know what move I was going to play in this position if he if he played it. And I only had, like, three seconds left. I think I, I thought that I had to go for something like this. Oh, yeah, and there's rook g7. I thought maybe I was, I was you know, not dead after after this. But, of course, this is just all all completely winning. Horrible, horrible. But I think ninety five spoiled a lot of it. Still losing, and then he he hangs a rook. God, just sickest sickest game. Totally gross. Yeah, and after this, I think I pretty much handled everything okay. Everything is kind of just winning at this point. I can hang a bunch of stuff, and it doesn't really matter. Yeah, until here, and then there's check. King c8 takes queen e1, queen d1. And black is no doubt still better, but having to win, and luckily I have the right bishop just in case, but um, having having to win this versus, versus what I had before is just completely pathetic. I mean, this game is just horrific. <laughs> I'm very lucky my opponent lost on time. God, jeez. Yeah, ha April Fools, suckers. You thought you were getting a good game. <laughs> you got this piece of garbage. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. Have a great weekend. I think I might be back tomorrow with another video. We'll see. Um, <laughs> cheers, guys.